Now the question he wants us to consider is, who did Jesus say he was? Right? Who did Jesus say he was? And, and as we mentioned last time, you know, many um, devout first century Jews became worshipers of a fellow human being. That issue seems to beg for a satisfying explanation, right? And so we can't help but ask, what was it about Jesus then that convinced them that he was uh, the son of the living God? Right. right? Pretty important. Uh, so people who say that Jesus never claimed to be God tend to fall into one of two camps. Those who haven't actually studied the four Gospels for themselves, or those who assume that if Jesus really thought he was divine, then he would have said so in the most explicit and unambiguous terms, I'm God. Yeah. And so if, if you interact with Muslims, uh, kind of the Ahmed Didat uh, question is, uh, show me in scripture where it says, uh, I, I am God. Unambiguously. Worship. Yeah. That's what he, he, he says unambiguously. I am right? God, worship me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yes. well, he says that, but, but it may not be as unambiguous as he wants, right? <laughs> right. But, and so Anderson tells us it takes only a moment's reflection to see that it would have been very counterproductive for Jesus to have spoken you know, these terms, I am God, right? Uh, Anderson tells us he would have been dismissed by everyone as blasphemous, you know, kind of a lunatic from the very outset, and nothing else he said would have been taken seriously, right? Moreover, for Jesus to refer to himself as God would have uh, obscured the um, distinction between the Father and the Son. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't, as Anderson is suggesting, just come right out and say it, as right. it were, right? Right. You know, God's not sitting around. Okay, let me under, explain to you the Trinity and in, in you know fourth century terms, and I'm going to bring it back to you. He <laughs> kind of uh, points them to Scripture, and there are uh, certain kind of subtleties that he takes, and also there's reasons that he does speak in these kind of story forms. It's so that people who uh, kind of have the the spirits leading. Um, uh, believe based on Can the working of, it of further God. and yeah that sort right. of thing yeah right uh so so even performing big miracles but once he tells them certain hard hardship things even the disciples are like oh, are you, you sure you want to say that and <laughs> you know most of the audience goes away because they they just kind of want that easy king that rides into into jerusalem and knocks and out makes Rome. a lot of bread and, and fish yeah right? yeah <laughs> and wine yeah <laughs> and it's uh, essential to recognize that jesus had uh had many other things to teach people than simply, I'm God. Yeah, so, you know, he didn't come just to proclaim, I'm God, okay, you know, and then go back. Right. right? Repent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for the kingdom of God is at hand. more than just that, right? Right. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Well, when else does he talk about the, the kingdom of God? Well, right before Pontius Pilate, you know, uh, ex ex executes him, he talks about the kingdom of God again. Yeah, and yeah. so th there seems to be a tie in there between who Jesus is and the kingdom of God. But. So at the beginning of his life and at the end of his life. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. He's, he's nothing but consistent. Yeah. Or at least ministry. <laughs> yeah. His message was one of good news. And if you're an ungodly sinner, hearing someone claim to be a God hardly counts as good news. <laughs> Jesus had much more to say about who he was and what he had come to do and who, what would happen afterwards, and, and all sorts of stuff. Mm. Jesus wisely adopted a more indirect approach to disclose his true identity, one that forced people to consider his claims more carefully right. and what they would give up. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, Anderson tells us that there's really no doubt that Jesus claimed to be the promised Messiah and the Son of God. For instance, when Peter replied to his question, who do you say I am with the answer, you're the Messiah, the Son of the living God, notice Jesus commended him for his answer. He didn't condemn him, right? Mm -hmm. He says, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. Right? So he commends Peter for this proclamation of who he is, right? The son of the living God, mm -hmm. right? Right. Uh, you know, when when the, the people come to him and say, oh, good teacher, when he goes, well, why do you call me good? There is no one good but God. The implication then is, do you find any fault with me? What 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 is it that makes yeah. my teaching good? What am I pointing well, towards? What makes me a good teacher? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so so <laughs> yes, a, a very indirect way of saying, you you your your outspoken word, but kind of betrays more than what uh, what even you were um, realizing there. Yeah. 
So many times in the gospel, we find Jesus referring to, uh, referred to as the son of God by others. And not once did he indicate that it was inappropriate. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're calling me uh, yes. so- somewhat close to God Back here. Back up here, buddy. Hold Back on. Up here. Uh, I am a lowly sinner just like the rest of you. you know, but no, he doesn't. In fact, Jesus used this title on himself on occasions. And at other times he refers to himself as the son in context where it's clear he meant the son of God. Right. And so it's important to recognize, Anderson tells us, that Jesus treated this title, Son of God, as the one that applied uniquely to him. No, it's not as though Jesus was calling himself a Son of God. Right. right? No matter what the Jehovah's Witnesses try to tell you. As if other folks could be a Son of God or a daughter of God in the same sense. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. He claimed to have a -a one-of-a-kind relationship with God the Father, one that uh, preceded, notice, even his human birth. He was the son of God before he was born, right? John eight fifty eight, before Abraham was, right? Yeah. I am, right? right. That kind of stuff. Right? Yeah. John hey, go high me. Eight. Yeah. Could all fall down. Soldiers fall down at just those words. <laughs> all, all sorts of fun. 